Hi guys, Virtus Education here with episode 5 of the CryEngine 3 SDK Beginner Tutorial Series. Now, in the past few videos, I've actually been going over getting you set up with the engine, getting you familiar with the interface, and moving around and so on and so forth inside of it. Now we're at the point where we're actually going to be creating our very own levels and creating our own uh, content. In this episode, we're going to be creating uh, content in the form of our terrain. So, having said that, the terrain is essentially the foundation of our level and that's what we're going to be creating we're going to be introducing you to the terrain editor when we're going to be going over the different brushes we're going to be we're going to be going over the different settings and most importantly we're going to create our own new level and we're going to move into sculpting our own terrain so for those of you that don't actually know what terrain is already uh, feel free to google it in addition uh, terrain is essentially the foundation of the level your terrain is going to be your things like your rock your sand your mud uh, whatever you know it's gonna be what your player walks on so if I just go over here quickly uh, go into the level uh, keep in mind this only applies to outside levels um, so if I go ahead and walk around inside this level pretty much all of it's going to be on terrain you know we've got our rocks uh, you know I'm gonna give you a better example here quickly by opening up the terrain editor and showing you how much of this level exactly we can go ahead and manipulate so keep in mind there's two ways to uh, modify your terrain inside of CryEngine. First and foremost you can do it via the terrain tab in the roll up bar or you can do it through the terrain editor. Just for a quick demonstration uh, now I'm going to do it through the roll up bar I'm going to play around with this and I'm going to start smoothing out some of this terrain so you can see uh, essentially which parts of it are the um, you know are modifiable. So you can see that you know the rocks here, the cliffs, that's all part of my terrain our, our sand, our wet sand here is part of the terrain. The roads over here are part of the terrain. Um, you know, our hills, our mountains, our slopes, pretty much everything uh, organic is going to be terrain uh, in terms of what you're going to be standing on and the ground. So, you know, having said that, let's just go ahead and introduce you to the terrain editor, the height map system, some of the different brushes that we have available to us and the settings and most importantly get into creating our own new stuff so whenever I go into the uh, terrain editor I just like to make sure that I'm not in the modify tab in the terrain bar uh, in the terrain tab of the roller bar just to make sure there isn't any conflictions with the uh, the two terrain editing processes so to open up uh, either of the two uh, to get into the terrain tab in the roller bar just go over to the roller bar Hit the second icon here, go to Terrain, and select Modify. If you want to use the Terrain Editor, uh, all you got to do is just go ahead and click the Terrain button in the top left here, right next to Texture. Over here we have a dedicated interface for modifying our terrain. Now, the most important thing that you can see here, which is unique to the Terrain Editor, is that we can actually see our height map here, and we can actually start painting on this uh, however we like, using the different brushes and so on, and painting on this will uh, reflect uh, what the level looks like in real time. So if I, if I quickly find a bit where I am now, if I start raising this, you can see it's going uh, into effect in real time, and I can pretty much see what I'm doing. Now, it's probably not the accurate, most accurate way to do it on a big level like this, um, but with the terrain editor open, you can also just go ahead and start uh, sculpting it in 3D space a bit like that. Anyway, so, let's explain what the height map is. The height map is essentially a type of 2D texture which defines the height of the, um, the terrain or the map uh, that height is defined by the color on side of on this texture there's two main colors there's either white or black the lighter it is the higher it's going to be and the lower it is the lower it's going to be on the height map so inside of height maps inside of cryengine anything below sea level you won't be able to see it at all however if i want to um if i make something that is um maybe uh, 17 or 18 in height which is just pretty much above uh, sea level you will be able to see it in black on uh, on here which is pretty cool so I'm just gonna quickly take a quick break here and uh, we'll start going over the different stuff that we have available to us 
Okay, sorry about that. So I was just having a little problem there, the terrain editor, and then I realized it was because the water level in this map is actually higher than the default. Anyway, so now that we know how the height map works and how terrain and generals work and general work, now we need to go over the different brushes that we have available to us. Now, for the most part, these are pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, first and foremost, we have flatten. This essentially allows us to define a specific height and then flatten the terrain to that height. So I'm just going to quickly check the water level here which is 142. So if I go ahead and flatten this to 145 it's going to be flattening the terrain uh, pretty much just above the water level. However if I go ahead and change this to something like 141 which is one unit below the water it's going to go just beneath it and you can see that it is inside of my terrain it's just underneath. So that's pretty much how flatten works. Um, also, if you want to know how to use these brushes, all you got to do is just go ahead and click and then just drag in here. And you can also do the same on your height map to paint it um, that way. Um, also, in addition, you can use control and click uh, to inverse the operation. So, for example, if we're trying to raise the terrain like this, uh, we can just use control to make it lower using the same tool. So that's pretty much how flatten works, allows you to choose a height and then flatten it. Also I want to show you inside and outside radius and this is pretty much universal to all tools. Uh, we can use the inside and outside radius to make the brush bigger or smaller. The only difference between the two is that uh, between inside and outside is that uh, we have two rings. So I'm just going to quickly make this a little bit smaller so you can see it easier. Um, usually on some tools we have two rings and just the difference between the two is going to be fall off. But you don't really need to know much about that right now. Uh, most important part is that these two allow you to change the size of your brush. So next up we have raise and lower. This essentially allows us to raise and lower our terrain um, just by clicking control and then uh, yeah and it will raise it or control and then click to lower it, pretty simple. Um, I advise that you, uh, if you want to go into detail when you're raising and lowering your terrain, you turn down this and then boom, you can start individually sculpting different parts. You can make out these rocks here and pretty much do whatever you want with it. But uh, you can sculpt out your cliffs and stuff using the raise and lower tool or heck, you could even flatten it to a um, the whole terrain to a certain height and then just adjust it using the raise and lower tool. Anyway, so uh, the way you can change and uh, change the amount that you raise and lower your terrain is pretty simple. You can do that with the height. So if I go ahead and set this to 20 and then start uh, doing it, it's going to be the effect of raising and lowering it is going to be relatively strong. Whereas if I set it to something like 1, it's just going to start raising and lowering it by about 1 unit, which is relatively low and allows us to be relatively more accurate. Now, one thing I also want to note is that when you're working with terrain and you're sculpting and so on, I advise you do change your speed up because if you're going to be doing a massive terrain like this, moving around at this speed is not going to be beneficial. So feel free to whack that up. Now, last, la lastly, we have pick height. This essentially allows us to pick the height from the terrain and then use that uh, height in our other tools. So, for example, if I go ahead and pick a height of what can we find over here, uh, I can then use this to flatten our terrain to that height which I just uh, picked which is 142 and it's pretty much uh, water level at the moment uh, and you can see that there so what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to pick the height of just above water here and then flatten it to that and you're going to see that it's just above and is going to make it look pretty darn flat because we picked the height and it's going to be uh, exact to what this is. So if I press Control G here to get into this, you can see it's pretty much flat for the most part. Uh, not quite so much right now, but if I go ahead and use flatten the flatten tool properly on it a fair bit, it will make it just as flat as we want it to be. Now, we also have something called hardness. This essentially allows us to choose how strong the effect is on, um, on certain uh, tools. Some tools use the height to choose how much, uh, how harsh or strong the effect is, whereas others use um, hardness. Uh, you'll understand the difference between the two as you get into using these tools. So, having used all these, let's just go ahead and create our own level using these different brushes and stuff that we have available to us. So, 
throughout the series we're going to be using one level and one level only and we're going to be creating and bringing all the different stuff that we learn together into this level so to create a new one, go to file new you don't have to save the changes if you don't want to and you will be confronted with this little dialogue that we have here this essentially allows us to define some of the base uh, properties for our terrain and our level so first and foremost we have our name which is pretty self-explanatory I'm just gonna call this uh, tutorial project for now uh, next we have the folder this essentially allows us to choose the folder in which it's saved however there is one restriction it's got to be inside of a level folder inside of your CryEngine SDK installation so if you want to find that and work out where it's been saved to and you know import export levels all you gotta do is go to your CryEngine free installation go to game SDK and then in go into levels now there's actually one level provided with CryEngine which you can see which is forest if I go ahead and open this up you can see that we got all the uh, files for that level right in there so I can choose um, single player and it can save it in here next we have a few terrain settings so we have this little checkbox here which says use terrain if we do not check this we will not have a terrain we will not be able to do any sculpting and uh, yeah, it's only advisable that you uncheck this if you have an interior level and you do not need to use a terrain. Uh, if you have an interior level and you don't use the terrain, it's going to be better for performance because it doesn't have to render all the polygons and so on and so forth. But if you do want to have a terrain, make sure that you do check this. Um, so yeah, I can't really reiterate on that enough. Just make sure you have it if you want to uh, use it. Otherwise, you will have to create a whole new level. Next, we have a bunch. Of, uh, we have two different settings which uh, choose the uh, terrain size. So firstly, we have a little label here that says terrain size. Currently, it's 2,048 by 2,048 meters. This is getting it from the height map resolution. The bigger the height map, the bigger the terrain is going to be. And from this resolution, we can then just uh, select a number of uh, meters per unit on that. So. As you can see here, uh, you know, 1024 by 1024 with two meters per unit, uh, that unit being pixels, uh, it's going to double it and set it to 2048 by 2048. Now, for now, we're just going to use a relatively small terrain. If you do not need a big terrain, make sure that you use a relatively small one as you don't want the player to have to render in additional polygons and also will help with performance. So make sure you use a small one if you need it. If you do need a big one, make sure you do compensate for that and create a big terrain. So let's just go ahead and create this terrain at 1024 by 1024. Ignore the dialogue that pops up. And then once it's done generating our level, we shall be confronted with pretty much the template level that we get with CryEngine. So pretty much every level with a terrain will start like this. Just a bunch of water and we have the terrain underneath. So what we need to do now is actually start exposing this terrain and bring it out from underneath the water. It's pretty simple to do really. Open up your terrain editor, check what your water level is so we can actually flatten, a, uh, flatten this out. And just drag this out of here. So to do that, just go to Tools. Uh, sorry, Modify, Set Water Level, and we can see that our water level is uh, 16. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a little island. So to do this, we're going to make sure that it is at least two units above the default water level, and then we're just going to make our brush size slightly bigger, a bit like this, and then boom, we're just going to start painting on this and create a brief island shape here now you can actually see that it has indeed made this in real time you can make it bigger and smaller using the height map or just painting it in 3d space uh, but for now I'm just going to be doing some basic stuff so we now have our base shape for the island a little weird uh, circle shape next we're going to be creating some uh, mountains and stuff so I'm going to need to make my brush slightly bigger again to make them uh, realistic in terms of what a mountain would be like uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm raising the height by a significant amount, so something like 5 should be adequate. And you can see that when I go ahead and click here, it's going to start making this uh, rise rather quickly, which is appropriate. A little too much uh, for now, so I'm going to set this to about 5. I'm not too sure why it changed, but there we go. And we can start making our mountains or your hills, whatever. You know, to be honest, you can create 
pretty much any type of terrain you want over this project and series. Do what you like. Just make sure you keep uh, keep in uh, keep in mind what I'm saying. Uh, but you should be able to follow along and create what you like using the knowledge that you will gain. So I'm just going to quickly make some brief mountains here. And I'm also going to make a few slits in the ground over here for like rivers and so on. So to do this, I'm just going to essentially flatten the terrain to a slightly below the um, the height level. So I'm going to set this to 14, which sounds reasonable. I'm going to turn down the outside and inside radius because we don't want rivers that are too big. As uh, let's raise this a little bit more. Boom, and then let's just start making these rivers. Uh, yeah, pretty simple, really. Now, just keep uh, trying to sculpt your island or whatever you're doing as much as you want to get the shape that you want. Now, keep in mind we will be going over detailing the shape and so on of our terrain in detail in a later video. Anyway, that's pretty much everything for now. Experiment with different things that we can play around with inside of the terrain editor and different brushes, properties, and so on. Uh, yeah. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is the smooth brush. This is pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory. Essentially, allows us to uh, make these small uh, these hard edges here much smoother, a bit like this. Now, just experiment with that. Anyway, this is pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this episode. Comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the next one. Goodbye.